let's take a look at how you can import data across multiple tables into a model driven app or Dynamics 365 CRM. What we've got here is an application that is being used for recruitment. This is my finished stage. I'm going to take you through how we get from a blank app and bring all of this stuff in from spreadsheets, including making the connections between the tables. So what I've got here is an application where I'm tracking a number of roles that I want to recruit for. So here's a role for an account manager and you can see that the role has many applications associated with it. I'm also going to have my candidates or contacts in there. They can also be applying for multiple roles. And so the application table has a relationship with both the contact and the role table. One role has many applications, one contact has many applications. And we can see here that in the application, we are looking up back into both that role and that contact or candidate. So let me go back to where I started from, which is a blank application. I've got a table all built for roles, a table built for applications, a table built for contacts, that's no data in there. But my starting point, and this is something I often see, is that I've been managing this in Excel. So I have got all of my contacts in a spreadsheet. I have got all of the roles in a spreadsheet. Perhaps I've been tracking the applications in a spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is bring all of this in and we're going to link them up. Now, importantly, each of these tables has to have something in it that helps us make the link. So if you've got ID numbers or something you've used in Excel, then that's probably going to make it easier here and chances are if you are living in Excel that's what you've done. So with my contacts I'm just going to be able to upload that as a single table. With my roles I'm also going to just upload that as a single table but then once we get into the applications here something different needs to happen because I need to connect it to both a role and a candidate. So you'll see here that what I've got is a role name. The roles in here are unique names, but you'll see that I've got multiple rows because I've got multiple candidates who've applied for that role. And importantly, I've just got the email of the candidate in here. I could have first name, last name, but I just need something in there that's going to be a unique identifier. Jumping back into my blank app, you will notice built in to your model driven app or Dynamics application, you have got some Excel functionality. The Microsoft stuff just works with other Microsoft stuff because <laughs> Microsoft, right? So import from Excel, you'll see in the toolbar there. I'm just going to zoom this up a little bit just to show you, depending on how your screen resolution works. If you don't see that there, the three dots, if you click on that, you'll find it in that menu. Now, don't just jump in and click that one straight away. We're going to go one step further click on the little arrow there and then choose import from CSV. You click on choose file that will just open your browsing window, which I've got over here on another screen because I don't want to show you all of, all of my secret files. So it's a CSV file that I showed you earlier for contacts. We click next. Next thing is it's checking on the delimiters. Now, because I saved it as a CSV, it's already comma delimited, don't need to do anything else there. And you can choose whether you want to have duplicates on. That's a whole other thing if you've set up duplicate detection behind the scenes, we're not gonna worry about that for now. Let's click on review mapping. And now what this does is an attempt to do the mapping for you. If you've got the same column headings in your spreadsheet as column names in your data table, it's going to be a whole lot easier. So you'll see here that it's automatically matched some of these things already. The primary field here, this is sort of a key field and a mandatory field. So it's already got that and you'll see that it's listed that in a separate section. You have to at least have that. Everything else you can choose to ignore if you want to. So you'll see here I've got an email, a first name, the main phone isn't mapped and the mobile phone is mapped. So let's take a look at the main phone. This is just because there are so many different phone numbers in here. So we're going to go through and see if I can find it. Is it main phone? No, see there's nothing there called main phone, so I couldn't find it. Let's call this one, let's map this one to business phone. You'll see there as well, just while I'm here, if I come up here, you can just choose to say ignore and not map it at all, but let's put it into business phone. All right, this one's nice and easy. Finish import and off it goes. So that's now going to run a little job in the background. If you click track progress, you don't have to do this. You can just click done, but this is a good way to be able to go in and see what it's doing. So this is going to bring something up on the screen that tracks it. You'll see I've done this a few times before. <laughs> so this is the top row that we're going to look at here. 
it's passing, so it's going through and finding all the information. Let's just be really impatient with it and click refresh. Now, I've only got 50 odd, I think, maybe 20. I can't even remember how many were in my spreadsheet, so this won't take long. If you've been on spreadsheets for a long time and you've got hundreds or thousands of rows of data, go have a beverage of choice at this point. Don't sit here and click refresh. But for 20 rows, I'm going to get away with it. So we've gone parsing, transformed, completed. 20 successes, hooray. Just to show you uh, an example here, if you do get any errors, they'll come up in that column and you can come in here and see the failures and it will give you information about why things have failed. Often things like the lookup reference could not be resolved. It'll sort of tell you which row it is in there. We'll come back to this one a little bit later when we do our applications. All right. Now, if I want to navigate and see what's happened here, I can just go back into the contacts table. I'm actually still in my app and look at that. That was blank before. And now I have all of my lovely fake people in there. Let's move on to roles. Now you'll notice I've clicked across whichever table I'm in. When I choose import, it's importing into that table. So make sure you navigate first to the table that you want to be on. Same thing again, import from Excel, import from CSV, choose a file, navigating over here into my secret list, roll CSV, and click next, review mapping, and we're good. Now, this has got something different going on here because I have actually got some choices in here. When I did my contacts, they were all just straightforward columns, name, email, phone number, but there's something else going on here. So what we've got with the roles is this is an account manager and that belongs to a certain department and you choose from sales, marketing, finance, and then the role status, is it open or filled? And we've got forced choices in there. So what it asks you to do is to map those things. So what we do is you'll see that's choosing which column it's mapping to. You actually want to click on this little icon here and that will now open up the mapping. And again, it's done a good job. If my values on my spreadsheet match the value of the choices, then this is super easy. It's mapped correctly, all of those things. If one of those wasn't correct, you could change it or choose to ignore it. So we're just going to say OK. And same with the role status. Let's just click on that. And again, I've got the status of filled or open. I've made it very easy for myself. So you'll see the easier you're mapping the values across from your spreadsheet as you build out your data table, the better. You don't have to do it that way. It's just a little bit more work in here. So let's click OK there. All right, we are good. Let's finish that import. And again, I will come in here and track its progress. There we go. That one was very short. By the time it came up, importing successes 10. Let's just refresh that. And oh, there we go, completed 50. So depending on how quick you are and how many you've got, you might not see all of the full stages. Let's go back into roles. Look at this. I'm all populated. My beautiful colors have come up. So everything that I've pre-configured in the app is just working. And you can see that I've got that department in there. So let's go in and have a look at this account manager. Manager. I've got my drop down list of department, it's mapped it correctly, my drop down list of role status, and it has mapped that correctly too. All right, are you ready for the tricky one now? <laughs> because so far we've imported two tables, but we haven't done anything with the relationships. This is where it gets fun. So I'm going to bring in the applications, and remember the applications are linked to a person and to a role in the system. So same thing, import from Excel, you know what you're doing now, import from CSV, choose your secret file again. There it is, my applications file, next. And let's review the mapping on this one. Now this is going to give us some things we've seen before and a couple of important different things. So first of all, we've got two lookups in here. This is where the relationships come in. And this is the order that you want to do it in. Put in those base tables first and then bring in the table that you're connecting with the lookups. Otherwise, you can't make the connection. So if you've got a more sophisticated data model, you are going to have to sort of plan out how you want to, to, to do this. So what we've got here, here's a candidate and here's the lookup. We're going to come back to that one in a second. <laughs> wait for it, role we're going to do first because role is nice and easy. So what happens is every table has what's called a, a primary field. So if I come back into the roles here, let's just um, close that down 
and refresh this so that we've got all these roles in here. This is the primary field, the thing that sits up here in the heading, the actual name is account manager. So as I'm coming in and importing that, remember on my spreadsheet, I just had the unique name account manager in the spreadsheet. So that's easy. That's what it's looking for is mapping the name to the name. So where you've got that, that's what it is. So the role is a lookup and it's looking up to that name all good, I don't need to do anything else. But when I come to my candidates, so if we come back here into contacts, then what happens is, let's have a look, say at Emily here, her primary field, the primary name here is that, it's her full name. But my spreadsheet had the email because honestly, full name, if you're uploading a list of people, isn't necessarily going to be unique, whereas email should be unique. So when we come into this look up here, I'm going to come in here and it's trying to match on full name. That will fail. Get rid of that. And then what we can do is come in here and find something else. So if I just start typing email, then I can find the email column. And so now what we're doing is mapping based on the email. So the default here is that it wants to map to the primary name field, but you don't have to do that. You can go in and choose anything else. So if you've got IDs in your Excel spreadsheet, as long as you've created an ID column in here and uploaded that, you can map it across. So whatever it is you need as a unique identifier, you can choose it in here as long as you've configured it into your data table. All right, we're good. Interview outcome is an option set. We saw this earlier, option set, same as a choice. So that has worked out. Now it looks like I've got some blanks in here in my spreadsheet. Not every single application had an interview time associated with it. So successful, unsuccessful, blank, not mapped. That's good, that's okay. And was an offer made, two options, yes or no. That's quite straightforward. And again, didn't have values everywhere there. So we've got some blanks in there as well. I think I think we're good to go. Shall I press the finish button? Are we good? Actually, one more thing before I press the finish button. You can actually save your data map in here. So if this is something where you're going to do this more than once, we can call this applications. And then what will happen is that when you want to do this again, if you're bringing this in another time, I mean, honestly, try and work in the app once you've moved there. But if you have an ongoing situation where you need to bring things in from a spreadsheet in this manual way, you can save that. And then other times when you come in here, instead of having to do this mapping every time, you can just choose that from the drop down list and it's basically saved all of that mapping, especially something like that where it's a bit fiddly. That's good. All right. Let's track our progress here and see how we go. So while we're waiting for this to pass, I'm just going to come back in here and show you this one where it failed the last time around when I did this. So this one is saying the lookup reference could not be resolved. So this is one and you can see here that I've got the same one twice, the column value. So this is telling me when I did that mapping into saying here's the lookup from the application to the contact it couldn't resolve that. In other words, there was no unique value for that one. So that one didn't, didn't map. So I can go back into my spreadsheet and it's pretty clear on telling me which ones are in there and uh, figure out what went wrong. Completed. <laughs> oh no, 15 errors. Here am I being all smug showing you the errors that have happened in the past. Let's see what's gone on here. All right, so we've got a bunch of these where the lookup reference could not be resolved. Same problem. I obviously haven't uploaded those ones properly when I've brought in my candidates. But let's go back and have a look at what we do have in here. So these are the ones that have come through successfully, uh, even though some of the interviews were unsuccessful. So let's have a look here at Emily's application for the account manager. So we'll come in here and look at this. This is looking good. I've got an application process. There's the application number. It's linked to the account manager role. It's linked to Emily. Just to prove that, we click through to Emily and it's made that connection. And we come back in here and it's linked through to the account manager role as well. And in that account manager role, it's populated that subgrid as well. I'm going to go away and fix up those failures. If you'd like to know more about model-driven apps, keep watching here.